This segment brought to you by the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center in Oakley. A sure sign of spring is not only the song of the birds, but the cacophony of frogs. For a tutorial on frog sounds, we turn to the Kansas School Naturalist, published by Emporia State and edited by Robert F. Clark. One of the times that we are aware of the presence of frogs and toads is when they're vocalizing. Sometimes these sounds are referred to as songs, but many hardly rate that title for they are merely grunts or chirps or screams. The term calls is also applied and is better for it implies that the individual making the sound is calling to another individual and that this is the case most of the time. Only males call, gathering other males and females together into a breeding congress when conditions are appropriate. Often, large numbers of individuals are calling at the same time from the same general area, and the result of this chorus can be a terrific din, particularly in southern swamps when a number of different species are at the same breeding site. Whereas most vocalizations are made to attract mates, calls may be stimulated by changes in humidity, declaration of territory, fright screams, or sometimes apparently just because they feel like it. The sound is made by air shuffled back and forth over vocal cords between the mouth cavity and lungs. Lowering and raising the floor of the mouth cavity with the mouth nostrils closed accomplishes this. In most cases, the sound is amplified by a resonating chamber known as the vocal sac. There may be a single external sac which swells under the chin and is sometimes quite prominent, as in bufo toads or a single internal sac as in the bullfrog, or in a double internal sac as in the leopard frog. Calls of the various species are different from one another, and it is easy to learn to recognize the identity of the caller. When it should be familiar to most is the jug of rum of the bullfrog, heard in late spring and summer. When the mid-March rain fills ditches, the chorus frog begins. It sounds is a series of notes ascending the scale, someone like the sound you get by running a fingernail along the points of a teeth of a comb. At this time that chorus frogs are calling, the leopard frogs also begin. The call is not very loud and is said to resemble the low clucking of a hen or fingers dragged across a blown up balloon. Cricket frogs got their common name from the cricket-like chick 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 sound they produce almost constantly. Along the edge of creeks, ponds, and lakes, spring peepers have a single high-pitched peep. Tree frogs, a short, loud trill. Green frogs sound like the plucking of seven, the low string of a banjo. Woodhouse's toad has a startling scream. The narrow-mouthed toad sounds like a muffled door buzzer. And the American toad has a beautiful high-pitched trill that may last for 30 seconds. Although most of the mating call choruses are conducted at night, a considerable amount is heard during the daytime at the height of the season, especially after rains. Other types of calls may be heard at any time. To learn more, check out the Kansas School Naturalist, which is free to those interested in nature education. Summer is busy at Tarwater Farm and Home. We have just about everything you'll need for your summer projects and we're consistently competitively priced. Tarwaters can help make your grass and garden grow. And we have a huge variety of equipment to cut it. If you have a farm, Tarwaters has the products and equipment to keep it going strong. And our expanded parking lot will make it even more convenient to shop. So come see us at Tarwater Farm and Home in Topeka.